Back in December of 2023, a popular challenge YouTuber, Joseph Robert Wilson, who was well known on YouTube for his Fallout and Skyrim challenge videos, had passed away in his long battle against alcoholism, shocking the YouTube community, the Fallout community, and the Skyrim community. Where he left the biggest positive impacts and inspired dozens of thousands of YouTubers like myself to challenge themselves with unique ways to beat their favorite games. I was one of those YouTubers, and Mitten Squad had inspired me to do too many Let's Plays, a Fallout New Vegas randomizer in 2021, and a Fallout 4 mod that made every enemy in the game legendary in that same year. Like so many content creators, Mitten Squad had left a positive impact on my life, and I wanted to honor his memory by making a tribute challenge video with my own personal favorite video game, War of the Monsters. I wanted to do this a few months earlier, but truthfully, I didn't want people to think that I was just doing this for views like a lot of people do when um, online e-celebrities pass away. So, in honor of Paul Robert Wilson's memory, we are going to find out today if you can beat War of the Monsters without killing a single human. The major rule is simple. If I do anything that will result in a human's death in the game, I have to restart the level. Since there's no indicator that shows exactly how many people you kill at the end of each level, I had to have made rules that ensure that we technically have no risks of killing any humans just to be safe. So here are the rules. Okay, rule one. Obviously, I can't step on a person or do anything that would count as killing one of these little sprite people. Rule 2! I cannot pick up a moving vehicle because someone is obviously driving it. I can't... Like, if I pick it up and throw it, yeah, that counts as killing a person. Unless that vehicle is standing still. Because it means that either the occupants of that vehicle are already dead because they got picked up by another giant monster because, you know, being flung around in the fist of a giant monster inside of a car like, uh... like this probably isn't going to ensure your maximum safety but it also means that the vehicle's probably also parked, like, uh... like this... like this gas truck here which moves on to rule three I cannot do anything that'll result in the destruction of a building like this because there were a lot of people in that building, probably, and they all just died when I destroyed that building, like this. Or this. And I think this is maybe rule three or four, but if a monster flings me into a building and that building is destroyed, that counts as me killing someone. Because technically, that's my big monstrous body being flung right into a building. Okay, rule four, maybe five. I cannot throw other monsters into buildings. Because obviously, that's just me throwing something big at a building and killing everyone inside of it. Alright, we got the rules. Good. Now that we have these rules... Let's begin. My first monster that I decided to play as for this challenge is Ultra 5 or, or Ultra V or however you say his name. A Japanese style fighting robot who I picked because of his light attack combo simply pushes monsters back instead of sending them flying into the air where they can crash into buildings and people, but also because of his ultimate that brings monsters straight to you and stuns them. Because the monster AI in this game is programmed to run off and annoyingly go for any health packs they can the second they are slightly injured. Unfortunately for us, the first level we get, Midtown Park, is a bustling city full of people, cars, fragile buildings, and news helicopters that actually follow the player around, along with Kongar, the one monster in this game with both good mobility and extremely fast attack speed, and he's the first one we have to play against in this super fragile level. Even though this is the first level, this is already the hardest level I had to deal with in this entire challenge. Like, don't get me wrong, 
I could beat up a giant monkey roided out on space fuel rather easily, but having to do it with fragile human lives that I cannot absentmindedly step on or pay no attention to becomes extremely difficult. Especially on resets number 5, where I had to reset because my ultimate clips the edge of this building, killing everyone inside. I quickly developed the strategy of grabbing the max health pickup so the enemy monster can't use it later before using power-ups, generators, and spears to spam my ult and stun spam to kill Kongar, the big monkey. But there was always some way I messed up with my ultimate or throwable. Like in Reset 7 where I tried to shock the monkey and this helicopter decides to play Get Down Mr. President for the King Kong ripoff. On Reset 10, I even got very close to beating this level, but right as I delivered the death blow that would knock his dead body back, the game somehow registers that Kongar hit the building to my right and destroys it, killing everyone inside. If this building did not get destroyed, this singular level would have been only 6 minutes instead of the grueling half an hour. This happens AGAIN on Reset 12, where I used my ult to prevent Kongar from escaping, but having his fat monkey body slam into the ground is enough to destroy the building beneath us and warrant another reset. As a matter of fact, playing this level was so cursed that not only did I get an audio bug out on Reset 21 that temporarily made the game muted, but after editing these reset numbers for some reason, change to a smaller font size. I don't know why my video editing software did this. After 28 resets, I finally decided to change up the strategy by switching from Ultra 5 to a giant mutated insect called Praetor. Not only can this monster straight up fly by repeatedly jumping, but its ultimate is sending out a giant flying parasite that latches itself on the enemy monsters and slowly drains their health with the added bonus of being incapable of causing collateral damage to the environment. This switch turned out to be a huge upgrade, because two resets later, I finally spanked the monkey to death without harming any other humans by my weird massive bug claws. Or so I thought. During editing, I discovered that at 2703, in the recording dedicated to this level, I threw a spear at Kongar that hit the building and, and... Okay, real talk, I don't even know what sort of Bajuki Land magic was infesting my brain at this time, to not have noticed the fact that I destroyed a whole ass building right in front of my face without even realizing. Like, even as I'm typing out this script for this video, I'm still dumbfounded. Luckily, since it was the very first level, I was able to fire up War of the Monsters again, and with two extra resets, I defeated Kongar without harming a single human life through a new tactic I developed called Spear Tech. As Spear Tech works is that you get two objects that can impale a monster, hit it with one spear, and wait until the pullout animation begins before immediately re-spearing them, causing them to drop the first spear, and you essentially softlock the poor kaiju and do this until it dies. Level 2, taking place in a Las Vegas-style area called Gambler's Gulch, involves us fighting Togera, a cross between Godzilla and Baraka from Mortal Kombat. In the first fight, he destroys a building, gives me enough spears to show him just how devastating spear tech can be, and kills him. But once Togera is gone for, we have a new enemy that seems to literally drop out of the sky. Robo 47, accompanied by the US military. I try to spear him too, but he dodges just in time and judging by this animation, or this light effect, I think the spear hit one of the tanks and destroyed it, forcing me to restart. After defeating Togera again, Robo 47 returns and this time I end up spear teching him to death as well. With only one reset on this level, a stark contract to the 32 resets from level 1. Level 3 takes place at Rosedale Canyon, 
a small map that has us fight several weak reskins of our own character before we have to fight our first boss, Goliath Prime. When it comes to this challenge, the only humans we have to worry about are these two turrets near the door that MIGHT be piloted by humans, but I ignore them just in case they are, and in a couple of minutes I beat Goliath Prime until he loses his favorite stroking arm and dies. Okay, you thought level 1 was bad? Welcome to level 4. Metro City, but without Megamon. It's a giant version of Midtown Park that not only has a giant praying mantis to fight, the same character as always, but also a borged out version of Kongar who's decided that he's going to help the other bug tag team my ass because he's still salty over getting spear teched. This level was the second hardest in this challenge. A good chunk of the restarts on this level evolved me immediately restarting because you spawn in on top of a crowd of people that automatically get stepped on by you. Such as Reset 37 and Reset 42, meaning that each time I spawn in, I have to hold still for 3 to 5 seconds so I don't risk stomping on any of these fools. I would have even beaten this level on Reset 28, but the Bajuki Land magic that was still infesting my brain during this gameplay kicked in and I threw a gas truck at Robocongar, killing him, but also killing everyone in the building next to him. This level truly sucked, considering the two teeming monsters, with one of them being able to fly and both running across the map with every big health power-up memorized. It was only on the 53rd reset that I finally managed to kill Robocongar with a spear that he threw at me that I had thrown at him. Now coursing with mutated Robo Mutant Monkey Blood in the new che in the new ch chest helm. What? What does this even mean? I managed to spear tech Praetor until she got saved by a passing train's fat hitbox, forcing me to end the fight by spitting on her to death before she can get away. Level 5! Wow! I was dreading this level. Because it takes place at Century Airfield, a map populated by at least a dozen explosive throwables, spears, and two main power-ups sitting high up where the two flying asshole dragons you have to fight can get to them super easily without any trouble. In fact, let me just show you this clip where I get blown up four times in under a minute. After two resets, I spear tech the first dragon to death and the other one while speared blows up a plane. I thought about resetting after this, but I am going to blame the dragon for standing there in front of the plane. And the dipshit pilot who saw a 100 foot tall dragon right in front of him and thought, Yeah, this ain't gonna cause damage to the plane. Okay, that, that was negligence, alright? And I'm gonna ignore that negligence because this level sucked. Level 6 takes place on Atomic Island, with these new monsters known as Kineticlops continuously spawning until you destroy all of the reactors they are spawning out of. Now, I didn't want to hurt these monsters out at first, because spoiler alert, these things used to be human, but after getting beaten enough by them, I decided that they aren't human enough anymore to count towards killing a human, and decided to kill a few more. I get to the reactors? And while doing this, my camera actually bugs out at one point and is stuck up to the floor until I deliberately get myself shocked. Yeah. 
after I blow up all the reactors, the entire complex has a nuclear meltdown and blows up the entire island, killing all the humans. Okay, I know this looks bad, but I am ruling that this is not my fault. But the fault of the faulty engineering on the ends of whoever built this massive nuclear complex. This place was an OSHA disaster waiting to happen. I mean, just look at this. I hit a vent and the whole place starts filling with this deadly Mountain Dew live wire that actually causes a shit ton of damage. And I'm pretty confident that this place was going to blow up anyways and I just so happened to be there. After the reactor blows up, we now have to face Vegon, a boss so boring and tedious that I'm not- that not only am I not going to talk about him since no human dies here, but this boss is considered so boring that the speedrunning community actually goes out of their way to use special text to skip this boss fight entirely. Level 7 takes us to Baytown, a massive city that's been rattled by a monstrous earthquake and has two Robo-47s with different paint jobs to fight. I do actually reset here because I do destroy a building, but I just decide not to count it. And here is why. Because there is no one in this city. No humans, to be specific, except for the few military vehicles that got wiped out in the opening cutscene by aliens. There's no vehicles moving, there's no people running around, there's no noises to suggest there are people still around. I honestly think they all just died from the earthquake. It's a grim thought. But that's the excuse I'm going to use. Level 8 takes us to a place on the island of Club Caldera what I'm assuming to be a Hawaiian island with a super angry island god and a living heap of magma are fighting to the death before they notice a giant bug watching them and without a hint of hesitation decide to team up and beating our ass. I have to reset twice unfortunately but on reset 57 I managed to get a gamo against a wall and proceed to beat him senselessly right in front of his frenemy who ends up betraying a Gamo last second as he's trying to flee by stealing the power of that completely refills health and could have saved his life, assuring his panicky demise at my weird little bug hands. But a Gamo does get the last laugh by shielding Magamo from my parasite by having it cling to him as he does his weird little death animation. It's okay though, I somehow managed to clutch at the back of the island and go feral on Magamo killing him without harming a single human. Hey, quick heads up, little editor's note. Uh, I kind of noticed that the uh, levels 9 through 11 massively bugged out when it came to my voice audio for the script reading. So while I'm taking this time to re-record like the final third part of the script, be sure to like and subscribe because seriously, this video might be the one video I've put the most effort in, in like, quite a long time, so yeah, please like and subscribe. Level 9 takes place in Sunopolis, or Sunopolis, I, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, where we'll need to fight two reskins of Ultra 5, who are pissed to find out that a literal bug got picked over their brother for this challenge. So, interesting fact. In this Japanese city style level, there is a massive UFO that if you throw something at it, it'll cause a massive tsunami and kill all the people sprites on the ground. I actually managed to get one of the literal bots to hit the UFO and trigger a giant wave of an object, but in that same life, I accidentally tase a building and have to restart, and couldn't replicate the funny and useful thing that I got to happen. After the robots do some questionable grinding on me, one of them literally punches me right into a whole group of people causing me to smear them all over the ground like... Like strawberry jam. Third attempt at this level, I shock the edgier Ultra 5 who seems to be just standing there. I get ulted by his brother, and by some miracle, I land in a massive cluster of tiny Asian people and manage not to squish a single one. Using this opportunity at this miracle, I leech Edgy Ultra 5 to death and slowly, slowly 
coax his other brother to the building where I finesse his dumbass to destroy the building and have it collapse on us and insta kill us both. To his pure merit, he does actually try to save me by pushing me out of the way, but my brain is cursed by Bajuki Land magic, and like a five year old left alone at Toyotathon, I walk willingly into my demise, which actually causes the game to skip the cutscene where the UFO abducts us. I didn't actually know that was a thing, that was kind of cool. Level 10 takes us to outer space where three aliens are waiting to beat us up for being such a good little humanitarian bug. Unfortunately for them, aliens don't count as humans in this challenge, so like something out of a sci-fi horror movie for extraterrestrials, I take out the crew one by one in literally two minutes and seven seconds before the ship explodes and their escape ship takes me back to Earth for, um, reasons. Level 11 features the final boss, Cerebulon, Destroyer of Worlds. Due to the fact that there's no evidence that there are any living humans anywhere, I immediately take out the White House just in case the cataclysmic UFO crash and deadly space gas leaking from the spaceship didn't exterminate President Biden. Do it. Poor kids are just as bright and just as talented as white kids. P wealthy kids, black kids, Asian kids. Bruh. The fight goes relatively normal for a final boss fight in War of the Monsters, and in moments I'm finally able to beat Cerebulon as Praetor in Mitten Squad's honor and prove that you can beat War of the Monsters without harming a single human.